Everybody knows that I do not watch uh, adult films. I never watched before I got in the Whoa, I never took anything to get an erection. You literally can burst your Holy smokes. More, more intense, intense, more yes. passion, more grabbing. My name is Ben Azulai, known as King Azulai. No one drifting, catch you slipping, won't be back as dead. You know what we want in life, and we go out there and we get it. Roll the riches, lot of fishes, so we throw a net. I get shit the magic, and I hear we back again. All right, guys, blackout here once more, and we got a very special guest. Go ahead and tell us who you are. If you guys don't know Phoenix, she's going to introduce herself. My name is Melissa Hutchison. You might know me better as Phoenix Marie. Ooh, Phoenix. So I got I to gotta say a little something before we start this, okay? Oh. Uh, you guys got to understand. So everybody knows that I do not watch... Uh, adult films and the reason I don't watch them is because I believe in semen retention which is and, great which is amazing it keeps me powerful it keeps me strong mm -hmm. it truly is it, it, I can't explain it but I mean when I Dopamine keep means semen, higher too way higher yeah testosterone levels are higher mm -hmm. I'm more I'm stronger in the gym I could lift so much more weight and otherwise you have to use a lot of zinc did you know that if you don't have enough zinc replacing after every single time that you do masturbate, it's a big thing for men and it actually causes that dopamine drop off where you're so happy and euphoric and all of a sudden you're just like, Ugh, I can't get out of bed is because you need more zinc every single time, magnesium and zinc and it'll help. Would you be able to tell us how many milligrams of zinc? About 50 each. Yeah. Wow. And that's going to change that. That's going to change that. Cause you know, like, cause even you if you're having sex with a partner, and right. you're like, you want to go multiple rounds? Right. Just replace it with zinc after each time you orgasm. Just take some zinc and you'll be good to go. Your re your refractory period, as I like to call it, will be lessened. And that's for male only, male right? And female. Female as well. Yeah. We don't need the magnesium as much, but zinc is always a good supplement. But I wouldn't take it like after every orgasm because clearly we do it a little bit more often than you guys. Right, right. Of course. <laughs> Hopefully. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it depends who you're with, right? <laughs> right. But uh, you guys, as I would like to say, but you know, it's funny that I have to share it now. I was a big fan of Phoenix when I was a young boy. Um, she's been in the industry for how long? Almost 18 20 years. years. Yeah. Go on. I'm all, it's close enough to 20. We could say 20. Yeah. yeah. Close to 20 years. I know she doesn't look that old because she's not. She went in there for. I went in late very, too. Yeah. Really? I started late. Everyone was always like, you got in and at like 24 and a half. Like I would have assumed like, why didn't you start at 18? And for me to just jump in at 24 and a half, 25, because I turned 25 pretty close after. And I was like because it wasn't the time yeah and yeah i really did i never watched porn before i got into porn whoa and i still have never watched a single scene of my own no way ever never ever i refuse really i would i have this thing <laughs> I, my biggest fear is that i would go and watch myself have sex and then i'd see a flaw in myself yeah and i would hate that part of me and then what are you going to do instead of being in the moment? Like, which is why, again, I think guys watch me is because they don't fake shit. You don't fake anything. Anything. Nothing. There's nothing. Not they, even an orgasm. Not even an orgasm. There's one scene that just came out where I literally just berate the guy that I lift and flipped, which we'll get to later yes, on in life. Yes, yes, yes. But um, I literally was like, we should have made the scene anal because you're big enough my ass is too big for you. Like, wow. I have no problem being myself. Wow. And so the idea of me looking and being like, oh my God, the stretch mark here on my side because I have big hips. Like now I hate myself and what can I do to fix? You can't fix stretch marks. And it's crazy be because I have a thing for stretch marks. You do? Like a little bit. Yeah, yeah like it's hot. A little bit of stretch mark, yes. a little bit of cellulite. I yes. think that's sexy on a woman. If uh, it's that's too just perfect. Israeli men. I know yes. it is. It yeah. is 100%. <laughs> Every Israeli man I've been with loves like the meat, the yes, flesh. Of They're course. like, oh, I love that. It of means course. you like feet. And yeah, I do like. I feet. know, but which means you're an amazing lover. I am an amazing lover, and my I'm girl like, will and tell that's just. That. I'm like, and I obviously happily. I'm crazy yeah. about feet. So me too. Good and bad. 
I get disgusted by feet. Same. Right? If they're not like perfect. <laughs> Agreed. But when I saw her feet, I was like, okay. Like, I kiss her feet daily. You're like, everything's good, 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 yes. good, good. You're like, oh, babe, you should put on some thongs and you hand her her yes, sandals. Yes, 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 yes. I'm like, they're super sexy. <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> I know She's like, baby, I was just stepping all over the floor in the house. I don't, like, I don't care. No, I just want to lick the top of your toes then. Fuck was, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, Let's it's the a top big part. thing. <laughs> I know. See? I, I well, obviously, we have the same fetishes. This is going great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And now you know he's watching me, guys. Yeah, so I was watching her until like a certain age. I mean, very, very young. And then I stopped. Yeah. It was like a whole month of going on and just watching you daily, daily, awesome. daily and multiple times a day. And I was like, man, I feel extremely weak, constantly ejaculating yeah. to a phoenix. And I said, you know what? That's it. And I stopped watching porn completely. You're like, I can't completely. do it Completely. And then I didn't know that people have porn addiction. Right. Huge thing. I moved out of it. And then I realized that people have it when I had a business partner who's mm -hmm. still my business partner. And he has a, he had a porn addiction and okay. I made him stop watching porn. Why make him stop? We all have one thing that we are addicted to mm -hmm. and that's our thing. sounds like both of us is definitely sex, mm -hmm. right? We have an addiction to sex. 100% only if it's with like the right partner. Right. So like Agreed. with my girl, yep. 100%. It's an addiction. I could yes. do it all day, 24-7. All day I don't need sleep. I don't need food. Yeah. I, I want just to make love. Yeah. But with me, it's also different because I create a connection between soul to soul. Agreed. And that's where I connect. Mm -hmm. If we don't do it, then I don't feel a connection. Yeah, agreed. Right? I feel a disconnect. Yeah. If she like... Has bad right feet now, that day. <laughs> yeah, if she right now does not look at me, <laughs> right? Because if she's doing something else, yeah. I feel like there's a disconnection. And then you're like, then you being an alpha male probably Correct. go over to her and be like, no, I need my attention. Yes, I'll grab her, like, pick her up, I love very you. easy. Kiss. The same way you do to some of these men, so I pick her up. <laughs> different, throw, different. I hope you don't back. do the same. <laughs> Actually, she could lift, never mind. Okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> It's so gonna be a I long stopped, one, guys. <laughs> so, guys, I stopped watching porn, and the reason was is because of her, because I truly, really liked her. And now, years later, she somehow found me on Instagram. I did. I never thought I was gonna be on social media. I started social media about a year ago, mm -hmm. a little bit less, and I went on there to help men. But then I realized that there are so many women who also need help 100%. because men have lost their masculinity 100%. and women have gained their masculinity. A lot. My problem was, is that I've realized that people say masculinity is toxic. I don't believe that. But if a woman, you work, right? Mm -hmm. You make your own money. I make my own money. And since there was no men around you, mm -hmm right you had to went into your masculine energy mm -hmm. in order to make money to provide to yourself right right you never hear a man going into his feminine energy to make it in life you no. have to go into your masculine energy well i mean there's some of the fake bodybuilder guys think about it and going in the olympics and doing like bench pressing and like deadlifts and you're like and then saying they're trans and you're like you're clearly not you just right. couldn't make it in the man's world right. so you did that right right of course but the truth is when a woman goes into her masculinity to make it in life it explains that masculinity is essential for survival wouldn't you agree agree which means that it can never be toxic can it i know it's not never anyone and that says masculinity is a toxic trait one is a weird feminism that believes well only women should be here well guess what we need men to have babies we Correct. need men to repopulate and you know what men never get loved unconditionally correct only women and animals and children do correct and whenever a titanic goes down guess what they save the women and children first right you guys will always go down with the right ship. right and it's like and, and it's like our duty yeah it's our duty to die in the time that it's time for us to die yeah and people don't understand that because people right now on the front line right yeah let's say you're War. jewish yeah. does anybody know you're jewish uh, not a lot, but yes, I am Jewish. Okay, 100%. guys, she's Jewish. Yes, I'm a Jew. <laughs> oh, she's God. one of us. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't flag this video. Uh, but, right. <laughs> you know, the fact that the Jews right now are in battle yeah, with, with Gaza, Hamas right? And, with yeah. Hamas and all that. Who's on the front line? It's all the men. Right. 
right? And we for have us, women forces. For us. And and there are women forces because there is. a lot of people don't realize like it's mandatory two years for every citizen to go into military Correct. training. And like the Tabor is the sickest fucking gun, by the way, ever. And it's like, <laughs> that's your guys' gun. I like guns. Anyway. Desert um, Eagle as well. The Uzi. And <laughs> yeah. It goes on and on it and does. on and on. But it's you guys train your women to be defended for themselves but you don't put them in the front line correct you realize that there's the value of someone needs to stay and protect the children right and right. the household well i have to go and do my duty yeah like it's amazing most people nobody really knows so my girl mm -hmm. she worked for kind of like the security services of israel for five years amazing and she's super super tough right so she looks that. like a cute girl <laughs> we go shooting yeah. and she's extremely good yeah she always when she aims she hits the like the targets she's really good like that's hot. the middle right in the middle no one why you love her but the thing is that i want to have a strong woman mm -hmm. i don't want a woman that looks at me and says i want to be independent where i don't need you right because independent means one there is no Agreed. room for another person and when you're independent and you there's no room for anyone else then there's no room for me right and me as a man it's like everything i've done in my life is so i could support a woman right and i could give her everything and to the kids mm. and i it love sucks that, that the, there's women out there that are like you know even you you worked your whole life yeah. did you ever want to have a relationship so i've had multiple relationships i've had relationships with israeli men like yeah. we discussed and that's how i found out that i was jewish was my mom's mom um fled during world war ii and married an italian man and then hid behind catholicism so that they could stay alive wow and then they all came to the states and then my mom married a man who had six children of his own and she made four more with him and wow. it still raised all six so she had 10 kids and it, you know as a all different ages my mom and dad are 11 years apart and so my mom being younger kept having babies mm -hmm. me being number seven but the first of their union which has been 43 years now wow like i'll be 43 in september their 44th will be in august so you're half italian half polish yes. right and a little bit of english yeah and at what age did you find out that you're jewish 30. and how did that happen because erez baharuzi i'm throwing you out there bud um <laughs> it is. Was, yes my, he's a good boy he taught me atabitsli and ania da tova that's yeah. it and ken and lo and like and then he taught me he actually really introduced me to the culture and he goes you missed your birthright trip by like five years and i was like mm -hmm. that's not fair and mm -hmm. he goes yeah you could have went on a birthright trip and i was like why don't you just take me anyway because i want to go and explore like israel and everything that it has and everyone's like you can go at any point in time you're always safe right and I, there was that war previous because it's always a war but um he's i was watching bombs explode in the air above him and i'm like this is okay. I'm watching. And he's like, yeah, we have the iron shield. Don't worry about us. Yeah. 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 He goes, we got a button that can destroy everybody. Yeah. He goes, we just don't do it. And I have a video that went extremely viral where yes. I was saying that yes. I said, we have a button that will literally take out Gaza completely, completely, but we're not looking to do that. What no. we truly just want to have is peace. Yep. And we've been wanting that for years. Most people don't know, but there's 18,000 people from Gaza, Palestinian men, and women that mm -hmm. come into israel daily to work right and we trust them there is a border where they came through well there's a reason that there's a border that you could open it's because it was open for them to come in and out right they have like little passports right that they could come into israel in and out and there's palestinians that live in israel so it's really funny that the world looks at us and say, oh, you guys want Gaza gone. You guys hate Palestinians. It's, it's all about water. All. It's oil. It's this. It's that. It's oh like, my guys, God. The don't believe the shit you see on the news. Go there yourself. So go there me. yourself. Why now not? I want to know something. Oh, no. So did you go to Israel? I have not yet. Okay. You're going to go to Israel. I know. I need by to. By the summer. I'm like, I, I want to. Sure. Tel Aviv in yes. the summer? Yes. Once the war is over, you're going yes. to Israel. Let's fucking go. Right, I'll send you to some good places. Oh, snap. Make We're sure going. Make sure they treat you well. <laughs> and um, on top of that, like. Oh, I'll have another Jewish man like is, this. <laughs> 100%. 100%. They're going to be like, her ass. Did you see her ass? Yeah. Yes. Tel Aviv. Oh, my God. <laughs> Phoenix is home. <laughs> 
Oh God, it'll be so, so fast. <laughs> so you're a 30, so you were already in the adult film for like yeah. five, six years. It was. And then how long were you with together with Erez? Um, I was with him for four years. Four years. And how did he feel with you going to work and coming Didn't back want home? me to do boys. So that's like... They didn't want you to do what? Men on camera. So that's usually when a man falls in love with you when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. We call it the little like there's a break where like we decided when we want to shoot, how often we want to shoot, who we want to shoot with. Right. So you choose who you're going to film with. A hundred percent. Like I have complete control over everything. What company? I'm my own agent, my own boss, my own brands. Right. Thankfully. Great. Knock on wood. Thank you guys for still watching. Don't listen to him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but guys, <laughs> semen retention, don't forget. You can watch her. Just don't I'm finish. wrestling it. No, let's just go. Don't no. finish. Yeah, just don't finish. Just edge the entire time. It'll be amazing for me and for you. Uh, but it's one of those things where I don't know how to put it. He was like, take a break. I took a break. Obviously, his mother found out what I do against it immediately. Anat didn't care, uh, Arik didn't care, but mom cared. And what is all Jewish boys kryptonite? Mm -hmm. Mamas. You yeah. guys are all mama's boys, and that's fine. Except for the fact that she didn't like me. And I was like, because of the porn. Right. And then I stepped away from it to try and fix and see if we can make it work. And then I'm like, you know what? You're not paying for anything. You're not doing the things that I need. Right. And I'm just going to go ahead and say goodbye. And then we just broke up. We Correct. still talk. Yeah we're, yeah. we're in each other's worlds. Like he talks to my mom and be like, Hey, you want to do some lunges? And he, my mom will be like, no, she made her do lunges up and down the street one time. And her legs were on fire. And she's so, a short little Italian woman. Don't be mean to her. You know, you know what it is though about Israeli men. Hmm. We are like mama boys, mm -hmm. mama's boys. And we love our moms. Yes. But as much as we love our moms, when we find the right one, we love her even more. And we know how to give her the right love. I need most, that. <laughs> most American men hate their moms. I hate you, mom. I, oh, my God. Screw you. you hear F you, mom. Right? Especially nowadays, kids with disrespect. Yeah. I swear in my life, I would have popped someone in the face if they were my child. I'd be like, no, you're dead. It's an issue. And yeah. it became a Huge. big, big issue. And for me, I mean, you could ask my girl after. I mean, the amount of love that she gets and it's because she's of, like babe if you don't get away from me i swear to god <laughs> yes yeah she literally she wants to kill me sometimes yeah. right, it's baby? okay you want to kill me sometimes 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 not, not so much i like <laughs> i like you like it so much <laughs> just flip her over like this and then <laughs> pull the hair you're fine yeah, you're good you're good don't it'll worry. be fine <laughs> but you know i give her so much love and i think it came from me knowing that uh how she love because mom, mom loved yeah, yeah she was next to me all the time my mom yeah. And I had a video not too long ago where I said, well, at some point when you meet your princess, right. you have to step away from the queen. So I made a video. And mm -hmm. This video was about needing to ghost the queen ghost. when you meet the princess. <sighs> so that way the queen could step down from the throne and give space to the new queen in town, which like is my that. lady. And uh, it was the first time that I did that. Because before... Well, it's the first time you were fully in love then. Correct. That's but why I think you married all, her. Yeah. I haven't married her yet. I'm going to yeah. propose very soon. Okay. Maybe you could help me with big, the... Big, big rock. Like something Let's big. Go. <laughs> okay. I got well, you. Well, of course. It has to be big because she's representing me everywhere exactly. I go. Exactly. Right? So, but you also don't want to get her finger chopped off correct. in public. Right. So. Right. No, it's not going to be crazy okay. big. It's... You know, I'm thinking between a carrot and a half to I, two. I think two is a she good She has a small fit. finger. She's small fingered. It's five. Two will look huge. huge. Yeah. So maybe 1.5. Yeah. I think something rose gold Ooh. with her skin tone. And then with like a little bit of diamonds into it to keep it very simple. The and halo. Delicate. Yeah. There we go. Got there you. we go. See? She knows. <laughs> I got you. We can go shopping together. It's easy. <laughs> I know it's shiny. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I can't wait for that moment. I don't even know. Like, I've never been that crazy about something. Yeah, where you're like, I want to make sure this moment and every moment that we have together is yeah. that special. But okay. before, if my mom didn't like every single woman. Right. Doesn't matter who she was. And this was the first time that I, like, ghosted my mom for, like, four months 
And she's Barely. like, where the fuck are yeah, you? Yeah, where are you? I'm like, I'm in Bali. I'm in uh, Indonesia right now, and I'm flying to Thailand. I'm from Thailand, I'm going to Israel. Yeah, mom, hope all is well. Uh, well, what about, mom, I left you a bunch of money. It's over there. Yes, yes, just go shopping, do whatever you got to do. Yeah, you've got it. You're yeah. good, right? You happy? Okay, cool. And then eventually she saw in the story. And then and she she's like, like, who's the girl? Oh, okay. Well, Not you guys look beautiful me. together. Oh. I'm like, mom, she's Israeli. She's like, really? Because mm. well, she's part, been wanting me, right? Yeah, she wanted me to be with a Jewish girl. Of course, every mother so does. Eventually, everything was good, mm -hmm. and now my mom is like, can't wait for me to marry her. So, and which she is wants the, the best babies, feeling. the grandbabies. Yeah, for sure. She's ready to step it up. And it's like the best feeling to know that my mom is happy. Loves her, yeah. But then we came here from Israel, but we went to Thailand for a little trip, then came here and then right. right before we flew here my mom calls us and she's like i'm in israel oh i'm like oh really we we're gonna come back home to see you yeah. but okay we'll see you in a few months it's like enjoy israel yeah love you <laughs> so for now you know we're here and everything yeah. is great but it's awesome it was the first time that i actually felt like i knew what to do to get my mom to understand that this is it. This is a real dynamic yeah. that I want you to respect. And it's the problem with a lot of Israeli men and Jewish men that they don't know how they to don't make know that how switch. To do it. And that was the biggest problem was there was no switch ever made. And, you know, it made me very sad because, again, I, I was in love with him. And then he'd come back and then the porn was a torment. His mother was a torment. And you're just like, it's too much. My mom is religious, by the way. Yeah. So like for for her, she's still going to temple. She's still yeah. doing everything. Yeah. For her, it's like very very different if she would see somebody with even a bikini photo. Yeah, on social media. Right. She'd it's be like, like that's what is not this? for you. Right. You know, because in her way, she looks at me, and it's funny because a lot of Israelis say that they're like, you have this soul right. that you should become a rabbi. Very soon, you should become a rabbi, which I think probably at the age of 50, I'm going to become a rabbi. <laughs> You're like, Just grow like, them out, throw Yes, yes. <laughs> Growing them out, <laughs> you know, and then yeah. I, I think probably at the age of 50, I might become a rabbi. So I'm studying wow. like the Torah, I'm studying yeah. the Kabbalah, the book of Zohar, like I have this huge right. book in my room and I love it, but I'm not there yet. So... <laughs> Jewish men mm -hmm. and relationships. So after four years, you guys separated. Separated, stayed friends. And he was okay with you doing porn. He was okay with me having sex with women on with camera. Women. Okay. So I always believe there's that like underlying thing of, well, don't have sex with anyone else, but girls don't count. And I'm always okay. like, well, why don't girls count? I've been with 1,597 women. I've been wow. with 63 men. And for some reason, women don't count. And I'm like, do you know how many times? Do you, like, so you know how many men you've been with? Yeah, 63. 63 total. Total. On film. On film and personal. Okay. How do you feel about the new women in town Okay. who are young girls? Mm -hmm. They write to me. Okay. Um, some of them were suicidal, Sadly. but uh, well, they're 22, 23 and been with over a hundred men. My thing then is they probably felt like the only way to get love was through sex. And they thought that was the only way to share it with the man. Yeah. I, that's, and unfortunately that shows that they were never given a self love or a self worth. Cause I do feel like that is something that is missing in a lot of, Parents now hand their kid their iPad and say, learn from this. And I hope this school, which is teaching like furries to go pee in a cat litter box, go do that and learn from that and learn your sexuality there and your self-worth. Yeah. And now with the internet and the trolling and everything else, it's so easy to deteriorate any young woman's anything. Right. Anyone into their like, I'd say 25. <clears throat> don't have the self-worth that someone who being 42 that I am, uh, we were a different generation. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have the bullying and the trolling. We had our bullies in school. Of course. Like that's how we learned like, Hey, listen, I got a crooked teeth. I got this. I got this. Like, okay, cool. I'm going to do whatever I want with it. Getting in fights in school, et cetera. But girls now it's like, well, I'm going to have sex and then sex can give me control. And then they realized sex didn't give them control. Sex gave the man what he wanted. Right. And their less self-worth 
because of the fact they gave it away for the wrong reason. Right. And then they feel like they've been taken advantage of. 100%. They feel like they've been neglected. Yes. And just thrown away. And it's, I've talked to these women. Oh, so sad. Yes. And I, I've got so many messages, especially in the beginning, mm -hmm. because I was talking about like good things about women. Right. And I was trying to help them change. You know, I was Some talking don't about change either. They, they don't want or they don't know or whatever it is, almost like they're lost. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Bali mm -hmm. and all the women there are lost. And they went to somehow in some way find themselves. Right. And it was so sad to me to see it's one island yeah. full of absolutely the most beautiful girls you'll find anywhere, all the world put together. I agree. They're have gorgeous. You, have you been to Bali? I have not, but I know a lot of girls from Bali because okay, they come here and go to Bali, yeah. the most beautiful girls on the planet, take them all together. They somehow got there. Yeah. They're all lost. Yeah. They all want to have a new beginning. They all want to find themselves. They're all sad. They've all been used. Used, yes. And it all goes down to sleeping with men for, for the wrong reasons. Well, and usually, especially if you want to go to Bali, like look how many people are going on tourism trips and it'll be escorting trips for like porn girls will go and they're like, oh, going to Bali. And I'm like, I know why you're going to Bali. Like, exactly. I'm not an idiot. And I just say, well, I've never been to Bali, <laughs> as I just said. It's so funny because everyone will be like, have you been in Dubai? I'm like, no, I have no desire to go fuck the prince. Sorry. Right. <laughs> no, don't need the sheik's money. We're good. And like, I, I can show you my phone where girls have been like, no, he's requesting you. Here's this much money. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. So you guys are realizing that there's a price tag you put on yourself. So right. if I am, let's just say a sheik prince. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm offering you a hundred thousand dollars for an overnight. Correct. Okay. For most women, they're like, holy shit, a hundred thousand dollars for one night. That's a lot of money. Right. That's like a cent to him. Correct. That means nothing to him. Right. He can wipe his ass with that. That's so funny. And that's where I go, you're looking at it as Oh my God, I got a hundred thousand dollars. He's looking at it like, I just did whatever the fuck I wanted to do to you. And I took from you. That's so crazy that you have that perspective and because I've said that to people before. I yeah. said, you don't understand his hundred thousand dollars or yes. his million yes. dollars it's is nothing. nothing. <laughs> he doesn't see anything in you. Yeah. If you tell me he gives you a billion dollars, he gives great. me you Bugatti. You know why? Yeah. Because he's a multi-trillionaire. Yes. They're not billionaires. Yes, they're People trillion. don't understand. Yeah. It's not on record. It's not publicly no. listed like because Elon they're that Musk. Rich. But because also they're in Dubai. Yeah. Right? Good they luck. own everything. Yes. They they're own the whole city. They're trillionaires and it's just not publicly on the record. Right. And then you have people like Elon Musk that has $200 billion, and they're which like, is, he's the richest. whoa, yeah. he's the richest person on the planet. Publicly, he is. Right. Because he's willing he's not. to get the attention. He wants the attention. Correct. Because that's why a prince wouldn't give you how much money I have in my bank account. Exactly. So why am I going to pay a tax on something I'm not going to claim? Uh-huh. And right now they start taxes over in Dubai. Oh, I didn't know 9%. that. 9%. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, but everybody again, that's there. why you have shell companies and you wash your money, one company to an LLC, to a trust, and every other way. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, then you ain't got no money, you. baby. Foundations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, it's funny because like, I'll have girlfriends that will fly to Dubai, go and escort with the prince who owns Emirates, and then they get stopped wow. at customs because they were rude to the prince during their sexual intercourse in the days that they were there. Well, if I own the airline, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop you there. Right. And then he stops them, takes all his money back, and lets them get on the plane instead of going to jail. Wow. How fucked is that? That's crazy. And I looked at the girls and I'm like, you want to know something? If I were ever to be an escort, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a fuel card because that's what billionaires have is fuel cards for jets. And guess what? It fits in your wallet and it doesn't show how much money you have on it. Yeah. Yeah. And they look at me and they're like, are you sure you're not like embezzling somewhere? I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> Iris, don't watch this shit. I'm like, but like be smart. Buy yeah, you're like if in yes. case, but I'm and, not going to Dubai. Yeah, I'm not going to I, Bali. I'm not, in, I'm not in any of those places. But I, I tell my girlfriends, I'm like, you're going to make that conscious decision to be in that line of sex work. Cause there's so many different levels of sex work. The one you described is, 
looking for love. My sex work is I give men my body looking for love Mm -hmm. with no monetizing other than love being what they're looking for or some kind of feeling from a man or like a masculinity, like you said, right. They're tired of being the masculinity. They want to feel small. So they uh, want to feel comfortable. So you started this at the age of 24. Mm-hmm. How did you even get into this? Cause you said you didn't even watch porn before. I didn't. That. Uh, so I had a motor clothes manager. I worked at Harley Davidson finance, um, for seven and a half years actually, uh, and decided that, I would go with the motor clothes manager whose wife was pregnant. He said, I bought these really expensive AVN tickets to go to the expo. I really want to meet these girls. Will you go with me? And I'm like, ew, are they going to be fucking? Like, am I going to see people fucking? Like, I don't want to see people fucking. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. Yeah. And he's like, they're not going to be fucking. It's just signing. They'll be clothed. I promise. Nothing weird. And this is 2007. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll go. So I went with them and I left work and I was in Arizona and uh, Zion, Utah, like opening both of their new businesses and one was already established. So we just met into Vegas and I was like, perfect. I go in, all I'm wearing is a business suit. I have my short, like black blonde hair and I'm like, okay, here I am. Like I'm with you. I see Jesse Jane. I saw like, Jenna Jameson's her last year. I'm seeing Tito. Tito mm. wouldn't even acknowledge me. I had already met Chuck Tito Liddell. Tito Ortiz. Uh-huh. And I laughed and I was like, it's okay. You don't have to look at me because I saw the guy who fucked you up anyway, bitch. Right, I said right. it just like that. I was like, fuck he him. He lives here in Calabasas. I know. Like, fuck him. Yeah. I'm all, he was like, he was so I used rude. to party with Chuck. Yeah. Chuck is amazing. Yeah, he's super he's nice the man. man. Yeah. Tito, fuck that guy. He's, he's I'm like, cool. he thought he was like the shit. And... For you to be dating somebody who's an industry icon, I get that. Mm-hmm. I'm all, I'm not in that industry at this point. I don't give a fuck about any of this. Right. I was like, I'm into UFC and the fact that like you're in this and I hadn't met Dana or the Fertitas at this point, but I'm like, I really love fighting and I'm a fighter. So I thought it was so cool to see. And I was thinking, and he whispers to somebody, I won't even acknowledge this girl with the, like a wave or turn of a head. And I was like, <gasps> All right, bitch. Later on in life, guess what? He saw me and he turned his head. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in a loving way. <laughs> but that's where I was like, okay, so I go. I get handed a business card by Randy Spears, who's actually now very religious and denounced porn, hilariously. He's like... The Jew or a Christian? No, a uh, regular... He think Christian? he's Christianity. Okay. I don't know. He's something. I'm yeah, all, yeah. Uh, definitely not Jewish, unfortunately. I'm so he like, hands you a business card? Hands me a business card that says, this is an agency's number on the back. Call them. Here's my personal number. I'll put you in Wicked immediately if they don't automatically sign you. And I was yeah. like, okay, cool. And I was like laughing. And then my friend who's all into porn is like, how much would she make? What are you doing? And I was like, calm down. Like, you're, you're, you are a super fan. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, move on. Go the next thing. All the girls are nice. All the girls are trying to like say, oh, I'd love to do your first scene. Love to do your first scene. And I'm like, I'm not getting into porn. Why do these girls keep doing this? Right. Mm-hmm. And I was, but I respected them because they're women. And I'm like, thanks. And then my friend's like, I was there to take photos for him. Right. Some of the girls would want photos. I'd be like, no, you have to get one. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll get this fucking photo. And now I've fucked all those girls in those photos. So ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, but I ended up following the agency on MySpace, yep, get them old guys. Um, and they continued to like hit me up and they kept saying like, you're really pretty. We think you should try porn. You're really pretty. Maybe you should come in for an audition. Well, in 2006, I auditioned for Playboy because my ex liked Playmates and that was like the hottest thing ever. And I always, I, my first thing I ever saw of nudity was a Playboy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's classy. I'm like, I'll just go in and see what they think. So that was 2006. That's why there's the 18 years right there. Uh, and they didn't, they liked my personality. They're like, you need to change your look. And I was like, I'm not going to change me for this. Fuck that. I left it alone. So I moved on to, okay, well, I'll answer these guys back on my space. I leave the finance world because I got in a fight with them other finance girl and I basically told her to go fuck herself we'll leave it that way and I said what am I going to do for money 
What's the number one thing you do whenever you're in sales? You're selling yourself. Correct. In order for someone to like you, they have to be sold. Correct. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to go give it a try. Fuck it. I love sex. I'm single. There's no reason why I can't. Uh, definitely not telling mom and dad. <laughs> definitely <laughs> and not telling any of the parents. Nobody's going to know anything. I'm just going to go to my, our California house and I'm going to, it's LA's not far from there. I went and met with the agency. They're like hundred percent. They t- had me get naked. I had never been naked in front of somebody that I wasn't sexually. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, and I was wearing a dress. I don't wear panties. I hate panties. I think they're gross. So I take off my dress and they look at me and there's like two people in the room and I'm like, <laughs> This is the most awkward I've ever felt. And I'm like standing like stiff, like, and they're all, your breasts look great. Your ass is big, big thighs. He said, do me a favor, like scoop your butt. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he goes, just put your hands underneath it, kind of lift it a little bit. So I was just like in the most awkward position. And he's like, I can guarantee you three scenes a month. No and problem. What, and, what did they pay and, uh, for per scene? And that's where back then it was a thousand dollars. So I was like, well, that's three grand three scenes. And then I had the whole rest of the 27 days off that was covering my bills. No problem at the time. Right. Right. Cause I wasn't who I am now. And I'm like, okay, cool. That covers all my bills. Now I got the Hellcat and all the other fucking Rocky Ridge trucks, all this shit and houses. We know that doesn't cover any of that. Unfortunately, after first scene, which, so it was for vivid brand new faces. Number two, if you guys want to do some homework, (laughs) take your time. Uh, you'll see, (laughs) <laughs> me get fingered by the director which doesn't happen usually yeah. um love you bisco uh he shot my scene he's still a good friend everything i looked at him i'm like you took advantage he goes i did he goes i had to he's like and you were tight and you kept saying how you were tight and i couldn't help it and i was like it's pat i'll, I'll give you your slide you're fine <laughs> it was on video it's fine it's captured in the moment and then um i never had a big penis before so i tore slightly And they jokingly said, look, she really was a virgin. (laughs) I'm like, you guys are assholes. But it was like, the sex was fun. Then they were like, we have to do photos. They positioned me. You know, this photo where girls are like this and like showing their ass. Right. My photo looks like this. They're like, do like the chicken wing. And I was like, okay. And I did it like this. And they're like, fuck it. Capture it. Because like, she so doesn't know what to do. It's amazing. And it's cute. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people like amateur porn. Mm -hmm. And so for them, they love the fact that I didn't know anything and I was easily taken advantage of. So I did it. I love the scene. It was funny because right before the scene started, the director who loved alcohol and a lot of other things looks at me and goes, there's alcohol in the freezer. So if you think you need to take some in order to do the scene, let me know. Like, Mm -hmm. feel free. And I looked at him and I'm like, if I have to take alcohol to do this, I probably shouldn't do it. Yeah. And no matter how anxious I was and everything else, but I enjoyed it. So like, did you sleep with the director or someone else? I slept with the male talent. Okay. So there was male talent. His name was Voodoo. And that's the one that had like the <laughs> Like that should never be anyone's first <laughs> was fucked up with them. But <laughs> that's what they did to me. And of course it's fine. But uh, he, Voodoo was really like connected with me he made sure like everything i we were doing there was a connection he was trying but he's kind of like the cocky he's canadian so he's kind of like ha ha making jokes and like i'm all i don't know if i like that joke like but mm-hmm. i didn't have a bad time there was never yeah. like he didn't hit me my ass he didn't degrade me it was just kind of like let's see if we can get in the rhythm of sex with me and you and then he's like going reverse and i'm like what the fuck's reverse I did not know any sex position names. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, is this right? And they're like, we're capturing that shit. Yes, that's fine for us. And then like everything ended. I got a call from the director and he's like, are you good? I'm all, yeah. Got a call from the agent. He goes, you now have 12 bookings for the month. And I'm like, holy shit. I was like, why? He goes, you got really good reviews. And I'm like, I I was like, it was fun. I had a great time. And he goes, yeah, no, you have to work like tomorrow and then the next day and then the next day. And then next thing you know, I have 60 scenes in 30 days. We used to do back to back scenes. So was it with the same guy? 
So it could could be, or it'd be like, hey, listen, you're going to finish with Vivid. You're going to shower, shave, rewash out, get cleaned up, and move on to the next set. Or they would do combined scenes where it'll be like, hey, listen, we're going to start with a blowjob scene. You're going to do that. So then how, you're going to go into a full boy-girl scene. So how did it end up that you've only been with 63 guys? Yeah. Yeah, because I got to have a say in who I had sex with. So once I met a guy, if I met, let's just say I'm on a set for... I'm oh God, something that Brazzers doesn't own. Uh, I'm on a big set where like Wicked, for instance, has seven male talent waiting mm -hmm. and we're all in like the green room and we're all talking. If I got a vibe from somebody and I didn't like him, I tell my agent, that's on my no list. He's on my no list. He's on my no list. He's on my no list. I don't like how he talked or fucked that girl or how he was treating her. No list, no list. So then I eventually made a yes list and it was 20 guys. And I'm like, listen, between the 20 guys, they should be in the price range for every company. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel bad if you guys don't like it, but these are the ones. Yeah. And people will be like, aren't you, we're tired of seeing you fuck Johnny Castle and Manuel Ferrara all the time. And I'm like, each time we have sex because we're so bonded, me and Manuel recently did a scene and we said we can't do threesomes anymore. We're too connected ourselves that when we involve another person, we feel lost because much like you're connected with your partner, correct? we're connected. And it's very interesting because I have the ability to build those bonds. And that's part of the reason why I made my yes list. I'm like, I'm a Ferrari. Yes, a beginner can get behind the wheel. Good luck fucking riding me. Odds right. are you're going to be done. You're not right. going to get hard. You're going to come soon. All the things that are right. horrible for porn. Right. I'm going to make you my bitch. Right. Where, what did these guys take also to, if you could share? What oh, some of them, uh, so some of them take Cialis or Viagra, right? right? We're not taking high dosage unless they've been in for a long period of time or there is something called Trimix or Quadmix. What is that? So it was invented in England and what it was meant to do is for a horse yeah. to start from stop to a full run in horse racing, it, they would burst their muscles because it would be too much blood to those areas. So what they would do is inject the horse with these trimixes, so this way there was blood flow in the hind legs, so they were no longer bursting tendons and muscles, and the blood was already there, right, and focused. Whoa. So they will, some men will do that. Some men will even go as far as getting <laughs> pumps put inside of them. What's a pump? So they remove your testicles, yeah. and they put in two rods that will actually fill with silicone, Mm -hmm. and you hit a button and it literally you watch your corpus cavernosums so there's the two rods go into your corpus cavernosums okay so i i, I don't I, even yeah, know that terminology know, yeah, yeah. but go ahead and here's here's medical ready <laughs> so we have the produndal arteries which feed blood to the okay, okay. which will fill the corpus cavernosum and cause an engorged okay so if you miss shoot with that cover jet for instance mm -hmm. you can cause the corpus cavernosum to burst you literally can burst your Holy smokes. Yeah. Or it doesn't go down because you put it in the wrong that. spot. And I have seen guys do that. And, or they inject it in the wrong spot and now they have Peroni's disease where you're now an L. I had a gentleman who came to me and he was like, I was always injecting because I was going to a lot of swingers parties. And this is when I was working at my medical clinic that I was. And I was like, you have Peroni's because you injected in the same spot and it built scar tissue, which you can correct with PRP and a whole bunch of other things. But the biggest thing is when they do the pump, it means that the blood flow is so backed up in your peridotal arteries that you can't naturally get an erection anymore. It's really meant for people who are paralyzed or having or very old and have paralysis that causing high blood pressure. Wow. All the bad health stuff that we all know plaques and platelets build up over time. There is something called ESWT, extracorporeal shockwave therapy, which can clean your peridotal arteries and allow blood flow back into the corpus cavernosum. You can do it at home. You can do it in an office. You can put PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, which you derive whenever you centrifuge your blood down, right? You take the, we call it the good gold blood. That's so crazy. And then you can inject it into your and it actually helps with maintaining an erection and is proven <laughs> fertilization for men. Really? So if they're having issues, instead of going straight to a Clomid, which is a pharmaceutical, you can actually do a Gaines wave and a P shot. And you're not going to have to worry. You're shooting the basket every single time. 
That's absolutely crazy. And it's amazing. And I tell people, go that route instead of trying to be, because unfortunately, the more you're, unless you're into the girl and you have to remember how bad it is for men, everyone thinks it's bad for girls. It's bad for men. Yes. It's bad for men because they have to fuck girls with BV. They have to fuck girls with yeast infections. They have to fuck girls on their periods. They have to have sex with girls that they're not attracted to at all. That's absolutely horrible. And imagine like... You I, couldn't pay me. Right? You couldn't pay me to be with someone that I don't want to be with. And that's There's where... There's no way. I don't yeah. care. First of all, I have I never took anything to get an erection. Right. Because I've been with the person that I want to be I want with. it. Like we right? said, that connection, right? It's Correct. like I, I'm only and as, fuck. as long as I have a soul-to-soul connection, yep. I could also get an erection. Yep. Or else I can't get an erection. It doesn't matter what it is. 100%. And also, if I'm with the person that I love more than anything, and if she for a second goes no or i'm not yep. interested or moves me even a bit yep. boom doesn't work we'll I try agree. in a few hours yeah why you rejected me yeah i felt the disconnect yes and that's, right away and i've watched guys literally struggle on sets and that's i think another reason why i've always been known as such a professional person i feel bad because people will have this misconception where like oh well we're being used all the time we're not being used all the time we may a lot of us og girls get choices the problem Mm. is there are the ones that we call three months we're going to use you for three months and that is when they come in seeking not love right they're going to hate themselves for something worse Mm -hmm. they're coming in for the money Mm. they're coming in for the fame yeah. I know I'm going to be famous. Right. I think I'm going to be famous. And, and then for three months, we shoot them almost every day. And they're used to the money. And then all of a sudden, you shot for all the companies that we didn't think you were that great. Bye. Yeah. Where do they go? Escorting, stripping. Mail. Wow. Gone. That's crazy. And then drugs and alcoholism. Right. And we've lost three porn stars already within the last mm, three weeks one of them blew her head off with a shotgun a woman a woman due to the fact that she and i know her and i knew her very well and she did a lot of drugs and she would be a partier and it was all due to the fact that she was escorting and she didn't like doing that and she didn't like having sex with some of the guys they would make her do it with and when you don't have control you seek substances or something to numb you right and it kills me because they're my friends and now there's obviously people at home that are going to be watching this yeah right and would you ever recommend Mm -hmm. to a woman to to go go into fuck no never and i've had people ask me all the time how do i get into porn i'm like wrong girl go ask somebody else and they're like, and they could be the hottest woman like I would want to have sex with. Because again, I like girls as well. I prefer men, but I, I love girls as well. And I can look and be like, oh my God, you'd be so successful. Which is different. You could just take her home, yeah. have it with her. Right, and exactly. You guys will never have an issue <laughs> later like, hey, on, listen. right? Right. But for me, it's, I'll give you for another for instance. My niece uh, was in a bad situation. I'm all, she's on the internet. She decided that of her, she saw where my position in life was, which allowed her to have an apartment for herself. I said, I'm taking you out of this. I'm going to let you have your own apartment. Basically, I have a room there, but I always travel. So here's your room. Finish your studies. I want you to finish your sociology degree. You have to do this in order to live here. And I need to see straight A's. And she Mm -hmm. was a great student. She started thriving in life. It was like... She saw a whole new world, right? And what you're telling me here is that pretty much they did it for the money because you you needed money. Yeah. And how much should women appreciate a man like me that comes and goes, I love you. Yeah. I want to give you the world. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to work. I want you to be a queen. I want you to be a princess. Here's a credit card. Right. Here's everything you need. Here's a home. What car do you want, baby? Here's the car, car you want. Just give me love. So you know what's funny? is how hard it is for a woman at any age over the... Okay, not going to say any age. An 18-year-old's going to jump all over that, right? They're going to be like, I get free stuff? <sighs> now, let's add trauma. Let's add 
guys who've made false promises, relationships that have not worked out, right? We're going to look and be like, where's the catch? You want right. love and that's it? Because right. like me, for instance, I have like so much love and I give love. And like when my niece, like it killed me, she decided to make an OnlyFans and I had to kick her out of the apartment. Wow. And she decided to go live with her boyfriend who's 20 years older than her. And she's 21 now. Wow. And I was like, you wanted to go into porn? You want to do something I told you not to do? I'm like, you're a beautiful girl. You have tattoos of my... So something that a lot of people may not know is I had a daughter from a youth pastor the, uh, situation where I was manipulated into. Um, and she died f almost five years ago. And they, she's got my daughter's name tattooed on her leg. This was your real daughter? My real daughter. And, and I... She died five years ago? Five years ago, almost. So October 3rd will be five years. And she died oh. at 18 and a half years old. And it was sudden, and it was a heart attack, and I was on my way to a medical conference when I got a text from my mother screaming, crying, saying, Diana had a stroke. We don't know what happened, but she's dead. And I am 30 minutes in flight, and I have two hours left till I'm in Texas. And I am screaming, crying. like She was in your life the whole time. My whole life. Always mine. Yes. I was mom. Whole time. And doing this. And it's funny because well, I, 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 I you need like a second. I know, I know. Right now. Yeah, no, it's horrible. I, Looking at my physically, my body and everything else. Yeah, physical appearance is great. Yeah. Do you think I'm fit. going to be an alcoholic and a druggie? Like, do they not realize? Like, so I went and got a titer test on my every fucking hormone that is in my body, every drug that's in my body. Then I went and got a normal panel. My lipids are all clean. My liver's clean. Everything's clean. I'm all, show me where the fuck this allegation came from. So I'm suing them, unfortunately, for a lot of money. But oh, they'll must. get what they, yeah. They but get what they deserve. They brought my daughter up. If they'd never brought my daughter up. Correct. Odds yeah. are this wouldn't be where it's going. But yeah. now it's going to be a lot. So I have like this chills in my brain. Yeah, right I know. Here. It's like it's because like, it's the child. Like of you course. can't. There's some things you just don't. You can't. You, there's lines you don't cross, no, right? No. Uh, it's and I literally wanted to beat the fuck out of him when I was done crying for four days of hurt because I thought these people were my family, and it's why I've always stood by that company, and I like gave everything of myself to that company, and for them to say that to me that day because they needed a scapegoat for something that happened. I was it's, like, fuck you. It's crazy. That's why, you know, I have a circle. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. But at some point in time, when I met my girl and I realized she's the one, mm -hmm. I told her, we're going to form a two-handed circle. Hold my hands. And this is the circle. We don't let people in. Yep. We don't go out. Right. It's me and you against the world. Can you live that way? great if not we can't be together Love and that. the reason is everyone will try to betray you 100 percent. and at the end of the day no one is going to be happy to see us happy mm -mm. people want to see us fail 100 percent. so if you're going to bring your mom in and i bring my mom in i oh. bring my brother you bring your sister it's done the only other hands that should be involved in that are the other little ones yes and that will be the beautiful triangled circle that it needs to be and you will have your forever and then as you guys decide like you said to finally get married which will help you find rings and propose and do the right thing God willing. i'm like it will bring so much more love and joy and when she gets to be a mother it's going to be everything and she's going to experience that love that agape love that god talks about or allah like where you know that something loves you undeniably yes your husband does but you know right there's a child's love and that is everything in the world yeah that's what you protect that's what we're made for right. we're made to bring great people into life i literally i told her right before you yeah i had a circle yeah. which eventually after a while turned into a decimal which was only me. Yeah. And now I'm forming again a two-handed circle. That's amazing. Me and you. That's, That's it. And when the little ones come come in, they're going yeah. to be in the middle of the circle. That's it. I like that they're in the middle. Yeah. Because you, you two have to protect them. Yeah, you them. have to protect them. 
come on, this world today. Oh, it's so bad. Come it's on. so bad. Homeschool is the only way. I wouldn't even. The schools are horrible. Yeah. The medicine is horrible. Yeah. Medical field is gone completely. The food is horrible. The food that we eat is horrible. The people around us is horrible. The social media. Is it, I'm like, why would any person even need social media? Yeah. I'm telling, like, I tell that to everybody. If you, you know want to become successful. is because they need people like us to say the real things that are in the world and not listen to the bullshit outside stuff. Correct. And it's the only reason I'm here. Yeah. Before that, I was never on social media. Well, I'm glad you decided to do it. Like, I, again, I found you because of one <laughs> of your videos. And I was like, that was actually hilarious. I love it. <laughs> and then you're like, okay. And I was like. And then we started following in just small chats. And then like it brought it to the point where now people see like, no, I don't advocate for porn. No, yeah. I don't advocate that someone should sell themselves. Now, the girls that are already in it will come to me and be like, will you be my manager? Will you mentor me? And I go, no. Right. You know why? Because you made this decision on your own like I did. But you're also a very strong individual. I am. Your testosterone levels are high. <laughs> right? My testosterone levels are high. Nice. Your testosterone I love that levels part. are high, I could tell. You know, you seem like a yes. very strong woman. Yes. And it's great. And But I, I also noticed- like I wish men like yourself, like there was more because the number one thing I want from a man is to feel small. Right. I'm so tired of being big. I'm so tired of them being like, here's this tiny person, go lift him and flip him and fuck him against the fireplace. Here's and this when girl. did that start? That started about five years ago. It's crazy to me. I saw you taking men and flipping, flipping them, them upside down. Literally. I haven't watched you for years. Yeah. But since you that contacted gift? me, and I was yeah. like, okay, she's going to do a podcast yeah. with me. I got to see what's going on. I got to be right. up to date, right? And then you're just like, why is she Holy flipping smokes. men? And like, thank God. And it's funny because I'm, I'm always like, how the fuck do I do this? Like, imagine the first time they show you and it, they're showing me women that are on so much like Winstrol, Oxandrolone, Clenbuterol, testosterone, you Staking name it. Steroids. Just like chicks like, okay, like I have a bicep, right? Get closer, to the, like, get closer to the mic. We want to hear like, you. They look at like, this is a, like a muscle, right? Yep. These girls are out to here. They're veiny. They're disgusting. Like, right. <gasps> I'm going to kill woman. you. It's not a woman. And it's, it's, they're their own women fine whatever you want to be but it's amazing because you're feminine i'm very you, feminine you're a woman yes and then you could take these men and flip and them flip upside them down like they're toys and give them blowjobs and give them blowjobs and <laughs> curl them i've curled a 205 pound man and blew him i shouldn't Holy be able to smokes. curl a 205 pound man correct i shouldn't be able to flip a 175 pound man and that's crazy that men have became so weak to the point it's the number that- one selling porn thing that i do Wow. Men want to see pegging, which means they've given up dominance and they want to be fucked in the ass. Okay. They want to see me flip men. They want to be seen as little. They want to be degraded. They want so much of themselves to be small. And I'm like, and they come to me with this. And I'm like, where I'm looking and telling you, I come to men wanting to the the I want to be small, but it's, it's like I tell you, I'm coming to men to feel small instead of. And it's it's really funny. So like throughout my years, you know, yeah. all the women that I've dated, mm-hmm. some dated really tall men, thinking that they're going to feel small next to them, right? And they feel way smaller next to me, because these men were beta. These men were feminine. These men didn't have muscles. They were just long. Yeah. Long doesn't mean anything. (laughs) Where I I could grab any girl. She could be 250 pounds. I could grab her, pull her over my shoulder, toss her onto the bed, make her feel like she's 20 pounds. Yeah. Which is what every woman wants. And then they're like, oh my God, you're so massive. And I'm like, why is it? Because am I the tallest guy you've ever dated? Because I'm like six foot. And they're like, no, I've dated a guy that was six, nine. And he was just so weak. And I'm like, yeah, are you kidding me? Well, let me guess you play basketball. Why women, some people, some women believe that if he's taller, they feel like they're more protected. They're next to me. Don't believe that. They're next to me. They're like, we feel like. Oh my God. Like you nobody You have can move. an aura of protection and strength. And you can be around a lot of different people and they can all be the same exact size, but you can feel who the bulldog and the fighter is, which is what you're 100%. 
You're like, if the Black Zillions needed somebody else on their team, they pick you. Like, yeah. it, you are one of the guys that's like, we need to go to war. Let's go to war. Right. Where I can look at somebody exact same built as you sitting across from you and I can be like, that guy's a bitch. Right. That's true. And that's, a lot of men that take it's a steroids. Thing too. A lot of men that take steroids. Oh my like God. That too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huge. Pheromone. It's yes. big. So a lot of guys who take steroids and get really big and then they sit next to me and they go, you're fucking intimidating. Yeah. My last podcast, the guys all use steroids and they go, you're fucking intimidating us. And I'm like, why? All of you guys literally weigh more than me. Right. I'm 210 pounds. You guys are all 220 and up. One of the guys, I think it was like 6'4". Right. I'm like, what's the deal? Yeah. And they're like, you're fucking scary. <laughs> and every man that yeah. sits next to me will right away feel intimidated. And the, second, the second I get a little bit, I get like that eye, yep. I look at them and they're like, oh my God, you're it's fucking It's because scary. you're seeing through them. Yes. I don't look at you. Yeah. I look through you. Yeah. And I get very And I can intense. see inside you. I can see who you are. And like, and like, I do a lot of the same. And it's funny because I've had people be like, well, uh, they, it was a whole bunch of like, just like from our, our mouths up. And it was so weird and awkward for me because I'm like, it said Phoenix always looking like a lion when she's sucking dick. And I'm like, well, it's because I'm taking care of the person that I'm connected to at the moment. Right, right. And it's like, I'm looking at you. I want to see. And like you said, I right. want to see your reactions. I want to see how your body moves. I want to know that I'm giving you pleasure. I know. I want to know if there's pain. I want to know if you've decided that your head is somewhere else because then I'm not turned on anymore. Right, you know? right. And you'd be surprised. I have no problem walking off of that and being like, connection's gone. Bye. And it's incredible that we're having this conversation so openly. And because yeah. I know you're professional, yeah, you know, it's like... And I have multiple businesses. And I'm I talking do, to you yeah. literally like I'm talking to a buddy of mine. Right. You know, open and not feeling anything like, oh, that sounds sexy or that. that. Yeah. I almost feel like we're talking about a business deal. It is. Which is crazy because you would think I've never I've never actually interacted with a with a female like this with a female porn star yeah I've or just anyone so. that's probably been like hey listen I'm on your level and we agree upon so much stuff and even though like you said I don't watch porn you don't advocate for watching porn right you still can look at me and be like this is Melissa in front of me. Right, right. Yeah. And I've, I've known Phoenix. I've yeah. jerked off to Phoenix. I know that Phoenix exists. I've been, she's been in my world before, but the person here right now is Melissa. And I know that if the camera came on and there was a scene, it'd be fucking amazing. Right. But right now I'm Melissa and I have these beliefs and I always have. I would think that a person like you who's mm -hmm. done whatever they've done mm -hmm. would be on drugs, alcohol, suicidal. And then I'm talking to this completely amazing, beautiful, sweet, loving, Remember when you said, educated or, person. Or no father figure. You were yes. like, wait, I can't believe your family's still together. And like, you know, my dad didn't find out until I made Penthouse, the cover of Penthouse, because I w was helping him at Cerritos College because he teaches at a college for auto collision technology. So... My dad found out that I was doing porn because I was at Cerritos College where he worked and a guy, he taught iCar classes for welding. Yes, I weld. I rebuild classic cars. I ride motorcycles. I do everything a man can do, but better. <laughs> it's always been my thing. That's why I started fucking chicks. That's exactly what I say. But anyway, um, I was giving the sheet metal to the guy and the guy looks at me and I was like, hi, Melissa, I'm here to give you a sheet metal. Your timer will start as soon as you turn on the TIG welding and here you go. He goes, your name's not Melissa, your name's Phoenix Marie. Oh my fucking God. I'm like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. That's my dad. Don't you dare fucking say anything. I leave because we're done with the day. Guy comes back, you, they get their results and everything else the next week. Mm -hmm. Guy hands my dad my Playboy, my Penthouse magazine in 2010. And wow. mom's known since about six months in. She did the crying. Did I do something wrong? Like, what, why? Da, da, da. I explain the safety, the testing, everything else. I do everything I want. And then she's like, okay, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but if it becomes too much, just come home. That's all she, all moms, right? Especially right, right. Italian moms, of come course. home. And so this is three years past, almost four. My mom's like, abort mission. Do not come home. I'm like, why? She goes, your dad has your penthouse. 
And I'm like, uh oh. oh and she God. goes, the neighbor has brought over his copy for you to sign as well. And I'm like, what? I'm, a, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm a mom. I'm, I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up right now. <laughs> like, I can't leave. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Not talk to my dad? Like, I'm a daddy's girl. Like, this isn't going to work. What did he so say? So I get out of the car and he's at, like waiting for me. And he always yeah. helps me with my bags to bring them into the house because he's a good dad. Right. And I'm like, do, do, do. I'm like, hi, dad. I heard you have something you might want to talk to me about. And he's like, yeah. Don't know if I'm really pissed or really proud. I was like, what? okay. And I was like, explain. He goes, so he doesn't know I do porn. Okay. Let's clarify. He thinks I just have done this magazine. Okay. Which is new. <clears throat> Obviously, he knows there's nudity. Right. So he's like, I don't know if I should be pissed or proud of you right now. And they said, what, what, what do you want to feel? <laughs> and he goes, I am very angry that you've decided to take this path. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm very proud that you've made a path and you have been successful at it. So I'm very much in turmoil with this. I'm going to say that I have these two magazines I need you to sign. Uh -huh. I don't want to see them ever again. And I'm going to take the I'm proud of my daughter for standing up and doing what she wanted to do and never doing anything she didn't want to do. But don't talk to me about it. Wow. And then we would play What's... a game or we would go to Disneyland or we would go to like Knoxbury Farm, something like that. And my uh -huh. dad loved to watch men's faces turn when they recognize me. And my dad would be like, he knows who you are. He knows who you are. He knows who you are. <laughs> and he'd be like watching. And I'm like, dad, stop. And I had a thing with my fans because of the fact that, you know, my daughter, I had a daughter. I still have one. <clears throat> She's just up there, you know? Yeah. Um, that if I'm with my family, you can't come up to me. That's my only no. And I told him, any other time you see me, you see me in a grocery yeah. store, you see me in the airport, <clears throat> come up to me, get a photo, talk to me, we're good. Right. But if you see me with my family, don't come up to me. And like, b mainly because I didn't want some sicko to know I have a kid, and that's a girl, mm -hmm. and try and do something disgusting with her. Right. Because then, mm -hmm. if my dad knew how my daughter was actually conceived he would have murdered somebody and been in jail already and i never wanted my daughter to feel like she was a mistake so i never reported anything against him he tried to take her away from me when she was two years old even though he was not in the picture it was really the grandparents and like they're hispanic and indian so she i literally he was prayed. a pastor yeah he's pastor i literally prayed every night for her to have blonde hair curls to be small and have light eyes and tan skin. I got a blonde hair, curled, light eyes, dark skin. I was like, don't let him look like, don't let her look like him. Yeah. Like, please. Like, I can't, uh, I'm, I'm not, because my, uh, my mom was like, you should have an abortion. You should have an abortion. And I kept saying, this is very secular of you. And there is a reason and a lesson that I need to learn in order to have, like, there's a right. reason why I'm pregnant. Right. And I had her and she was my angel. And now she's even more my angel. Correct. And she was always my center point. So it's like, no matter where I was in the world, she's always there. And then my parents would watch her. She'd stay there whenever I go somewhere. She was always either with my family or with me. There was never a time where she wasn't with us. And so she always felt like she got even a better, she got two moms and a dad, a real dad, wow. meaning mine. Wow. So, and That's... she never wanted to talk about me doing porn and she knew, and it was cute because right before she passed, it was June, she graduated, took her to Disneyland and she was putting on makeup, which I can't do makeup, by the way, we pay people for this. Um, really? I cannot do any at all. I'm horrible. I'm like, I'm usually bare face, like hair in a bun, like that's it. And it was so cute because she's doing her makeup and she's like, God, you suck at makeup, mom. I'm like, okay, thanks. Appreciate you. Love you. She's like, I could do it for you later. Just let me get myself pretty. And I'm like, okay, again, love you. And she did the cutest thing ever. And she goes, you know, I know more than I ever, ever tell you. And I'm like, I bet you do. And Mullen, if there's ever a time that you want to have that conversation right, right now, even 
I'm okay with us having that conversation. We it, children's curiosity is huge, and the internet it's big, and you can find everything on the internet yeah. today. And she knew. I think she knew at Penthouse because yeah. she knew there was a buzz about a magazine. So I'm guaranteeing you that's like 2010. So that would put her. She was right at 13 and a half, 14. So there was already sexuality. Like she's grown right. up enough, yeah. you know, to like have started searching. Abella Danger told me she started drinking off to me at 12. And I was like, Abella, don't ever tell me that again. Who? Abella Danger. Really? Told me she's been jerking off to me since so, she was 12. So it's really, you know, it's like a funny thing to talk about or like kind of weird. It's, but it's, people it's more don't weird understand. because it's like, so apparent that here's porn now. Yeah. And nobody's teaching their kids that they shouldn't watch it at 12. And it's a, the weird thing is that people like don't want to really talk about yeah. this, but God yes. created us. And yeah. you know, as Jewish people, mm -hmm. we have our bat mitzvah at 12 right. and our bar mitzvah at 13, mm -hmm. because at 13, you're supposed to be a man. Correct. And many years ago, we would have kids at that age mm -hmm. and a girl, she usually gets her period around, around 12. 12. Yeah. That's when I got mine. When she is becoming a woman, a woman and she's capable of having a baby yeah so actually because times got way softer and the world got weaker right, right. people got weaker because yes. everything got softer right easier way easier. so now a 12 year old girl it's a little girl yeah it's a baby we protect them right yes. and then even 18 it's like a baby and then but at the <sighs> same time it's like if you want to find a virgin at you're 18, not good find luck. Her at 18. No, you're not. Because literally, I internet. talked to the rabbi. Yeah. I talked to the rabbi, and before I met my girl, I said, yeah. "I'm only going to marry a virgin because I have this problem." And anyone look that's at what touched happened. mine is not okay. You know. And then look at what happened. I went to speak to the rabbi, mm -hmm. and the rabbi told me, "Look, even if I find you a religious girl, it's going to be extremely difficult." to find her that she has not done something with another boy, even if she's going to be 17. Yeah. And I said, what? He goes, yes. It starts. There is so sons and grandsons of like the biggest rabbis of all times. Yeah. And they are boys who steady all day, never seen a woman before. And they want to get in with another, with a woman. So that mm. way they could get married. Right. And they can't find a woman that of will God. fit them. Of all, a woman yeah. of God. Yeah. A woman that has not done anything before. And they're Sorry. literally 17 years old because he's 18. Yeah. And she's and he's 17. Ready. It's like we should be on the same path. And something has happened. Almost like the devil mm -hmm. has taken a very, very nice chunk, like a bite off of humanity. 100%. And too many women are lost. Mm -hmm. they're lost and they also lost the ability to bond yes. and with that ability to bond that we used to have we would have more kids more babies where you go into new world order right where you have less people in the world because if if the women are already sexually promiscuous and don't need you because they're independent feminists exactly <laughs> yes and then they don't even go into a relationship anymore the men don't want to go into a relationship anymore when men are coming to approach a girl, she's actually being a little bit rude. Oh, yeah. So it makes men like feel like they're getting Fear. scared. Yeah. They don't want to talk to a girl. They're not used men to Men don't even era. hit on women anymore. Yeah. And if we don't make the approach, we know the women won't. Right. And there we go. We took, we went apart. And it's sad because things used to be so much more beautiful. Yeah. And you as somebody that's in that field, like, what would you say to these girls now that believe that they are doing porn because they did a sex scene on OnlyFans? Uh, first of all, I think that, again, I, I kicked my niece out of my apartment, so it shows you how I feel. But just so you know, just because you're doing OnlyFans doesn't make you a porn star. Yeah, a porn, a porn star, star is a star. Like yeah, a, It's like somebody yeah. who like me who's put in the time, who's put in with major companies who show up to set and has built a professionalism that is unbreakable in this industry. Right. Where if you say my name to any porn star, porn person, or even that little Instagram influencer, they'll know who the fuck I am. Right. You can name so many girls. And I had a guy, he's like, I want to meet all these girls. And I was like, I know two of the names. And it was a list of like 20. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. And he goes, well, they're really big on Instagram or they're good on Insta, Like they do. And I'm like, yeah, right. they're not anybody. Right. I'm sorry. And you have to remember that so many of them now buy all these followers 
Like that's could, huge. People send me messages all the time. They're like, well, you could buy followers. Um, well, I bet you it's that one that's like, here, Cardi B's having a promo. Yeah, if you want to yeah. pay it, like I know yeah, exactly yeah. like high society. A thousand dollars, you get a million followers. And I'm like, why would I get a million followers? That, that, don't, followers? that are also not going to interact with your content. So right. it's going to show that you're a fake person. And you know, something happened with my account ever since I went to Thailand and went to Israel. First of all, I went to Israel and I got a message from Meta saying, welcome to Palestine. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> yes. And then something went down with my content where my people don't view it. But like, if you look at my content, like, you know, I posted a story, right? Right. You'll see most people, I don't know how many views they get, but like, I post a story and there's 11,000 people watching my story. Right. And it'll get That's up up. It'll get up to 25,000 to 30,000. Right. Okay. Every day watching my story when I post. And then my last posts like have been going down completely. And we're talking about from millions and millions of views. And I'm like, what has happened? And it was literally from the time I went to Israel. Something happened with the account. I start posting from there. And my account went down completely. Completely uninstall uh, the app for a day. Yeah. And reinstall it back on your phone. Really? Actually reinstall onto an, a computer. Okay. And then, re, or an iPad. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm all, I'm thinking yeah, the same, yeah. same. But into an iPad or whatever d device and then put it back on your phone. And I bet you it'll change the VPN again okay. and it'll put it back to the States. Okay. Cause what it's doing is just trying to drive traffic from Palestine to look at you because what you are your origin. So it tagged you and left your VPN in Palestine. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I was like, what was happening? Yeah. What the hell what is happening? What did I do? Like, yeah. you're all, well, my friends are gone. Yeah. Like, wait, <laughs> no one's watching. Um, and then also make sure like. And good thing I'm a strong individual. Right. Because the you people, don't give a fuck. You're exactly. Like, I'm a, I don't care. I got 200 likes or I yeah. got 100,000 likes. It really doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, now I understand how these influencers fall into drugs, alcohol, suicidal. Yeah. Right. Some okay. of them committed suicide. Yes. 100%. I'm like. And now I understand the feeling. I've put a million dollars into social media. I'm talking about building the set. I'm yes. talking about the cameras. I'm talking about the editors. I'm talking about traveling, all the yachts. SEO you name it. shirts. All, yeah, making all these sure things. everything looks great. Yeah. Like videographer, everything. With the past year, I've put $1 million so I could come out and help people and say, hey, men, become stronger. Do not suppress women. Uplift women help women get better because if we will guide women and women will feel that we're strong enough to guide them yes. and will trust in us again we will have families we will have love we will have children what about the fact that the back world in will the be day, better we had and this is how my family is you can always come home and that's right. something that i don't think is taught anymore is you know you're supposed to be a family clan correct you're supposed to always know home is safe right God forbid you go off, marry, have children, something bad happens. You can always come home. Right. That, that, that's gone now. Like there, it, there's no more family to come home for 90% of these people. And My mother would love it if I fucking decided to move back home. Here yeah. you have, we're in California. Right. So in California, you walk down the street, you see homeless people everywhere. Yesterday I bought a blanket for a guy who I literally saw in a fetal position and I'm watching people go through and they're getting tans and I'm like, this guy's cold. All I have is like, I had a big giant like watermelon juice and like candy in the car and I would put it next to him and I'm like, he's still cold. That's not yeah. going to take care of it. I went to the CVS up the road. I bought a blanket because I, I, he needed socks too, but they didn't have socks. Mm -hmm. I gave him the blanket, like broke it open. I put it on top of him. He could, he was obviously on drugs. He didn't really right. move or anything like that. And I had a woman look at me and go, that was such a nice thing to do. And I wanted right. to be like, and I literally started to like, well, up crying. I'm all, no, it's a human. Right. Right. It's like, it's why like, can't we just do nice things? And I want to be like, he needs socks. So if you can find him socks, go buy socks. Yeah. Like I'll go into a place and start smiling at people and just talking and chit chatting yeah. and people, you know, some people, sometimes a lot of times it's women yes. who from the side who I didn't even talk to. And it's like middle aged women. They look at me like I'm annoying. I'm like, you know, it doesn't hurt to smile. Not at all. It doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't. You tell somebody they look good today. You made their day. Oh my Why God. not? I pass out compliments all you the know? time. I'm like, 
that's our job is to always be giving of love. Like we as humans should always love. And it's like, love isn't sex, guys. It isn't that. Women, it's not sex. Like that's not how you show love. Love is, I want to give you this happiness because it gave me happiness. And I hope it gives you happiness. Right. And there are so many people who don't understand that, don't get that love and that need. And I'm just like, "Why, why can't you just smile? Yeah, yeah. Like, why? It's, what about your life is so horrible? Do you did you eat today? Mm-hmm. I'm all number one. Did you did you get food? No. Correct. Do you need food? I will go buy you food. Right. I'm all. I give twenties to somebody, and I'll have like like one of my exes would look and go, "Why did you give him twenty dollars?" I said, "Here's the deal. He's either going to use it to feed a habit. That was his decision. He needed to numb the pain. Yeah. I'm all. I hope he feeds his belly." I'm all, or he may use it to go towards other money that's been given to him today to find some place warm for the night. Maybe buy shoes, maybe buy socks, the simple necessities. Mm-hmm. My old car, and I have one now that is filled with socks and blankets. Yeah, and you know, I tell people, like, you have to understand that when you're nice to another person and you give to someone, yeah. the deal wasn't made between you and that person. No. It was made between you and God. The nicer I agree. you are... The more it you always give, comes back. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. It comes back 10 come, times more. And as Ugh. Jews, we yes. have it in our religion. And, we, and per- people think we're just money hungry and that's all we, and we hoard. And it's like what we make, yes, we, we give. give out. And you know what? I, you know, I don't have a temple and I haven't had the chance to go to temple. And again, like a lot of that relationship with the church wasn't given to me because we hid it. But I've always given at least 10% in tidings to others right because i'm like they need it so in the jewish religion we give 10 percent, and you need to do it in hiding you're not supposed to show it yeah. you're not supposed to be proud right. of it it's the deal between you and god because god yeah. told us this he said if you want me to fill up your pockets you have to empty them if you don't empty them i can't fill them back up and that's I where god that. speaks to us in ways that you can never hear somewhere else right and these are things that have been taught to us in over generations and generations and generations. We must give in order to receive. Yeah. And love is all about giving. It has 100%. nothing to do with receiving. And I, I tell people, I say that like with the blankets and the socks, it's like those are things that you can go to a thrift store and buy that somebody took out one sock from a six pack and it's $2. Go to Goodwill. Like these people just need necessities and if you can just go around and whenever you're especially during this weather like it's cold it's rainy right go to a thrift store right go somewhere i don't care what you buy buy it for a unisex person like i hate that term but buy a jacket that'll fit a man or a woman of any size i always buy 2x Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they'll either use it as a blanket, maybe right, they can right. use it as something to sleep on, right. so they're not wet. Like, I just want people to be comfortable because I've been given so much, and I've lost just as much, mm-hmm. and then I've gotten it back tenfold. Right. And right. I go, you know what? There was a lesson to learn, and I tell people, I will give you my last penny before I'll ever see someone suffer. Right. And right. I don't care. And actually, you know, it's really crazy, but a lot of us Jews are like that. Really? And we're just like that. Well, I got, especially I Israelis. Yeah, especially see? Israelis. People around the world will say Israelis are bad. You don't even understand. You go to Israel, yeah. you're American, you're you're black. It doesn't matter who you are, Asian. You come to Israel, you're Arab. We love you. Yeah. We just show you love. And that's what going back to what I was saying is here in California, you have homeless all over the streets. All over. You go to Israel, there's no homeless people. Literally, you'll find in Tel Aviv maybe two people who are on the street, but they're druggies. They're not homeless. Yeah, they're just passed out because they did drugs, and that's where they're at. And they're left on the street because they don't want to go back home. But everybody in Israel has a home to go back to. Again, it's all family oriented, and And that's that's beautiful. I wish that was more given or an opportunity. And I feel like, like you said, the devil's taken that chunk out of the humanity where it's like, I don't know if that guy had a knife. What if he was playing asleep? I don't know. And like, 
you know, as a woman, I felt like I'm strong enough to take on any man that comes after me. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the man of today. Yes, 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 I'm all. But I and I didn't. I, I you have to think that way as a woman now because you're like there are so many people who could be on drugs and et cetera. Right. And I, but I was like, he's asleep. He's on drugs. He needs this blanket on him. It's 40 degrees and raining. I need to give him this blanket. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen when I do that other than I needed to do it. And you know how hard it was for me not to stop back at the CVS and buy more. And I was right, like, right. No, unless you did what you needed to do back away. You have a loving soul. It's amazing. Yeah, you have a loving soul. I also, like I'm talking to you now, you know, you yeah. have so much tenderness to you. And it's, it's the, amazing. I'm a girl. Like, yeah. And people only see this raging, strong, like dominating person on camera. And it's like, no, I want to be like feminine. I right. want to have the love. I want to have somebody hold me. I want to have somebody have amazing sex with me, passionate, touch me, grab right. me. And that's where the, the yes list came in is like, this is how many people I feel that can give me that love. And I've never done a game bang. I've never done a blow bang. I refuse. And people are like, and I've had male performers be like, I can't wait till you do your game bang. It's 18 years, guys. It's never going to happen. Also, I don't find it attractive. So you've never, you've never been with multiple men? No. Um, how many uh, men were on set two. with you at the most? Yep. Two. Two. So two. So there's a one where three guys are there and then there's one where four. And what would happen is uh, I can out fuck all of them. So they they had to <laughs> rotate. Okay. Okay. So there was four on the scene with you. On but. a set. So never more than three guys on me ever in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's no more places. Thank right? you. Right. Like. Where, where else do you go? There's right? three holes and it's like... I'm like, guys, you're I'm all, there's no need. And I'm all... There's no now, need for 10 guys. Yeah. There's no need to go and be crude about the sexual acts that we do. And it was so funny because I controlled the scene and they were like, we need more men. And I was like, it's not a game being scene you know, that I'm shooting. Yeah. And you know I'm, what's crazy? To be honest with yeah. you, I'm such a person that connects yes. that I couldn't imagine even my girl asking to have the sexiest girl on the planet be with us. Yeah. I'm like, what would I do with her? You're like, I, I, don't I don't love her. her. I, I have don't nothing her. for her. Yeah. I don't need her in the bed with us. Right. She's actually just interfering in what we're doing. Right. Because we're I'm like, here. I'm here. And I want to put a baby in this. And exactly. I want to do this. Yes. Exactly. For the past <laughs> month, I'm like, I'm putting a baby in here. She's like, we got to get married first. I'm like, baby's going in. No. <laughs> like if it day. happens, it's going to happen. Yes. But uh, it, was, it was also the first time that, yeah. remember I told you I was looking for a virgin. And it was the first time that I realized that when you truly connect to a soul, the body no longer ha actually matters. I so agree. when you truly connect to a soul, the body no longer truly matters, which means even if she's been with someone before me, which I know every single person she's been with before me, right? I know everything. We had a conversation, we sat down, she filled me in, and I love her so much for actually telling me exactly the truth. Who she was with, she said, I can't lie to you. Amazing. I can't lie for shit. I'm going to tell you. And you're going to go and see my family. And you'll see that I am a good girl. Amazing. But it is what it is. I thought I was going to find you. And it wasn't you each time. And I had to keep trying. Oh. So I did my best, you know, to try to find you. That's beautiful. And she's like, and it's not that bad compared to the rest of the girls out there. You know that. And I said, honey. I know that completely. And it was the first time that I literally told her, I said, I don't Look care. Look at your if you're, You yes. love her. I was like, I literally, I told her, yeah. I don't care. Even if you were to tell me that you're with 10 dudes before me. Right. I love you so much, your soul, that I truly don't care where the body was because I don't mind wherever it was. For me, it could go to hell. I want your soul. And she looked at me and she started crying. Yeah. And she was like, you're the most amazing person. I can't believe this is happening. From the first moment that I met her, I told her, you're going to be my wife, sit here next to me. And that's exactly what's happening now. Oh. And the numbers are not bad, yeah. you know, compared to the, the rest of the uh, girls in the world. You mean my 1,597? You know? yeah, okay. Exactly. It's just like, girls. <laughs> exactly. No, it's girls. Yeah. It's okay. I'm like, ah, oh, you can go sleep with the girls. It's yeah. fine. But, you know, it's like, for me, it's just... It's, you know, even one was too much. Right. 
And then because but he taught you how to step back into and understand, like you said, that soul never connected with anyone because exactly. like she said, I was looking for your soul. Yeah. I was looking at, through all these people thinking the facade that they showed me was your soul. Right. And then unfortunately, however long it takes for us as women to realize that is not the person and we all make mistakes and we go back to toxicity and that's all just going to happen. The most amazing part was, is that when you meet a girl mm -hmm. who she had multiple boyfriends, right? She had multiple long-term relationships. Right. When you meet a girl like that, she's usually traumatized or she's been taught something so stupid that now she brings it to me. For the first time in my life, I meet a person that does not bring anything from the past here to us. That's amazing. Literally. I could act goofy. I could act funny. I could act stupid. Right. She takes me for what I am. Love it. I could say retarded things sometimes just to test her. Yeah. And she looks at me and she goes, do you want to eat something? <laughs> She's like, ha, ha, you must be hungry, babe. Yes. <laughs> you're you're like, hangry. Hey, <laughs> I'm like, I am. You know, like I get a little bit angry sometimes because yeah. I'm just intense. So I'm like, let's go. Let's, let's go. Move. Yeah. And she goes, what's going on with my lion today? Yeah. Does he need <laughs> Does food? Does he need to get fed? And do I need to suck your dick? What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> something sexual? I got you. <laughs> But it's true. How do you know? Because that's how it is. Like I am. So I much like you. If I am not having a certain amount of sex in my personal relationship, I don't think it's a relationship anymore. Right. And I will change. And it's a drastic change. Right. Just like you said, if during a position, if somebody disconnects and looks away or you feel a different movement and you're like, we'll come Boom. back to this. Boom. Like it's done. And I do that with relationships. I'm like, if I'm not craving you, you're not the one. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm like, I have to crave you inside me. Literally. I have to have you. And there's only so much time that I can allow where it's like, you're not initiating it. And I've given you hints that I need it. And now you're not doing it. Doesn't work. Correct. Correct. Literally. It's how I feel. And everyone thinks, oh, well, you have your Hitachi. And like, I always joke about Hitachi is like to keep me from cheating on guys. It's like, I do have a Hitachi. Yes. Women have toys. Fine. They're great for both men and women, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But in the bigger picture is I don't want to have a toy. I want to have you. I want this to be I've, you inside of me. I've personally never seen a toy before, except at a store that I passed by, which was, I think, in Amsterdam. A mall. Yeah. They, a mall. We'll talk after the podcast so. about something you should get for both of you guys, which is amazing. <laughs> and it doesn't go inside any holes, okay? Okay. okay. I'm like, let me clarify. It doesn't go in any holes and it okay. doesn't demasculize <laughs> anything. It's so amazing. I'm, so there was this woman in Bali mm -hmm. who just came up to our table. We were sitting all the boys. Right. Um, I had my videographer there with me and my editor and a couple of guys that work with me. And she goes, can I sit down with you guys? And she was like 50 years old. Yeah. And I go, yeah, sure. She sits down. We start talking and I, she's a therapist. Yeah. And I go, real, oh, wow, nice. So now you're going to you start psychoanalyzing and she her. Goes, <laughs> and then she goes to us, every man must have anal sex. Okay. okay, so I don't believe that. So we all sit down and we look at her. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to say. Okay. And then my friends just starts laughing. One of my friends smart. From Greece. He's like, "Let's break this ice because yes. it's awkward." Like, what? Oh, okay. And then he goes, "Why the hell does he need to have anal sex?" You know, he's got right. this deep accent. And she goes, because that's just going to make the world a happy, loving place. It is and not. I'm like, what are you talking about? Do no. you understand that men have literally lost their masculinity? They have lost their manhood. They've lost everything. They are literally, they, their handshake of a man today is yeah. weaker than a woman's handshake. 100%. They've lost it all. We want to lose more. What more do you want to lose? Right. Like it's done. Uh, give up your anal virginity. Yeah. That's what she thinks exactly. you need. Like for that. So here would be the psychoanalysis on that is that you need to give up the power mm -hmm. and the strength that you have because it's seen as as long as he's never been violated because it is a not pleasurable thing. The first time you ever do it, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm all because you don't know how to do it right. Mm -hmm. It is going to hurt. Okay. And what she wants is to see every man hurt. 
Mm. She's a woman who I think a lot of therapists are toxic. I think a lot of therapists like to play games with men yeah. that they think they can. I definitely, definitely, definitely don't recommend personally yeah. for anybody to go see a therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist. I also don't believe in medical, to be honest with you. There's I a feel lot. like I feel like the I feel like if psychology was a real thing, right, then you know, it would line up like one plus one equals two, two. right? Easy. Yes. Why do we have science so we could determine the future? Right. The same thing, why do we have math? so we could determine the future. Psychology, you could have a dad that's a drunk and you come out as a drunk, right. and then you can have a dad that's a drunk and you'll say, I'll never drink in my life. My mom and dad. How is that psychology? Psychology should work. Well, it doesn't fucking work. No, it's you know? habits that you choose to keep. My parents uh, both came from alcoholic parents and my mom and dad don't drink. And they're like, no, we're fine. And like to see that, but because of the trauma as a child, like you said, you're either going to take on those habits. And then I dated somebody who was, is recovering. He's seven years now sober. I didn't know him during the time that he was an alcoholic, but he goes, it was inherited. And I'm like, no, it's a trait you saw. <laughs> exactly. And then you decided to take on. Mm -hmm. And my mom and dad, my dad was left alone at four years old. And didn't know where his mom or dad, his dad was schizophrenic. So unfortunately, my dad has Alzheimer's and it's showing that it's going that way. Um, and he'll be almost 80 this year. And I look and I go, you were left alone with your brother at four years old to fend for yourself. And you chose not to become an alcoholic. My mom raised her younger brothers. Same thing. Where's mom? Where's dad? Her dad died when she was young and she had to be the alpha female. And that's exactly the story of Batman and the Joker, the hero versus mm -hmm. the villain. They both have the same backstory. Mm -hmm. They were both orphans. They mm -hmm. both had a very hard life. The Joker says, everything that's ever happened to me, I'm going to do it to everyone and even 10 times worse. And the hero says, everything that's ever happened to me, I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen to anyone. And that shows you that psychology is not real. It's true. And it's in every fucking movie. It every is. hero movie. Every single one. Every single one has got their twisted character that, and like you said, the fact that even for Joker, and Joker always chooses his vengeance randomly. Right. His attacks are always random. And that's one of the things that like, and Two-Face always uses chance, right? Mm -hmm. He always flips yeah. his coin. He gives him a chance. He goes, you may be the person today, you may not be. Right. And it's so intriguing that whenever you look at even Batman's world, because I'm a huge nerd, sorry. Me too. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> you can look at each character and realize, look at Harley Quinn. She was a psychologist. She was able to meet somebody who was so intelligent that he took her psychosis and made it her own mm. and put her in a world of looking for love for right. him. And what did he do? He withheld and right. she followed and right. she followed and yeah you can look at the new versions the and fuck the loss. new ones besides the fact margot robbie have, is hobbies hob margot robbie's hot as fuck that's not the harley quinn that is real the harley quinn that's real is the one that is so dark and twisted because she was dipped in a vat of oil mm -hmm. she was mentally fried and then he used to be why do you think she has hyenas he'd sick the hyenas on her they were his. Mm -hmm. and then they finally accepted her as the pack leader. Right. That's why she finally left with the hyenas and met Poison Ivy and decided that. And then you look at Poison Ivy, hated right. men. Right. The whole purpose of Poison Ivy was to destroy men. And she kept trying to bring Harley Quinn into her side and of hating so crazy men. crazy that they put this in movies, yeah. right? It's almost like they're trying to guide women yeah. to hate men. Yes. Then and putting like, men and women at war when yeah. we shouldn't be. And then there's like all these movies that came out not too long ago. Like there's the one with like the end of the world. Oh, you know? the, 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 uh, <clears throat> he's having our baby is one. Um, I wa I watched a few, I watched one that was so like demented and it, it, like, there was one called the civil war, if I'm not mistaken. That's right? coming out. 
that's coming yes. out soon. Which, yeah, I think it's like in the next month or two. And then there's one that's like the end of the end of the world or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that one and, is already out. Yeah. And I, I wonder, like at the end of the day, are those movies or are they just telling us what their future well, is going to look is, like? It is 100%. Um, you know? The one that was on Netflix is one that, I don't know if you've seen it, where they use EMS... And it destroys, and the whole purpose is to discombobulate you. And then they set off all the nukes that we have in the world. Yeah. And people don't understand why a new world order is even supposed to be happening, you know, to reduce right. population from 8 billion to 2 billion, somewhere around yeah. there. They don't understand why it's even happening. But the truth is, going into AI, artificial intelligence are taking over the world. Right. You can we don't have need somebody, you anymore. Exactly. You have to and provide something. And what does something. that show you? That we are all disposable. Yes. All of us are disposable. They want to get rid of us. We can't let them. No. We have to work as a team. What's funny is the people in power think that they can't be replaced either. Oh, correct. And that's the fun part is it's like, then you go into the matrix. The matrix is real. Yeah. It's real. It, it, I mean, look like, back look at in the, the day. Look at the robots that are already killing people. That they have, they're have. they at a shooting range and all of a sudden he turns and kills the guy right. that's programmed him. Right. There was one where uh, five robots in China all of a sudden flipped and went evil. Like yeah, yeah, basically, the factory. And then the one, he, the one of them started already downloading data from Google on how mm -hmm. to fix himself mm -hmm. and make himself stronger right. so that we couldn't kill him anymore. No, it's crazy. Like, and they don't understand that once artificial intelligence gets big enough. I hate AI. You don't need people anymore. No. Why do you think that... There are so many new contracts for girls and women keep saying, like, we should be doing this AI because, like, the company wants to pay us for it. And I'm like, oh, really? The company wants to pay you for your image. Okay. Well, now you're not needed for scenes anymore. Exactly. I bought your branding once. So I don't need to pay you anymore. There are some kids that literally open yeah. up pages yes. of girls and it looks like a real girl. I mean, and it's Brian AI. Powell, when he did that, yes. I, he scared the shit out of me. It He's is like, AI. I've been talking to this girl and she's not real guys. And I yeah. was like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. It's and it's, it's crazy because yeah. soon you're not going to need any models anymore. No. Right? Because you could get a perfect model with AI. 100%. And she could walk. She could talk. She could look sexy. She could be funny. Yep. She could she laugh. Could, she could joke around with you. She, she could tell you She knows your anything. history because you programmed her to understand oh. when you're sad and when you need this and when you want your dick sucked and when you want this and that. The only reason why it hasn't fully hit is because the technology of physical touch isn't there fully yet. yet right and that's what they're waiting for but in west hollywood there's already a restaurant that right. brings you your food right right you have a 100%. robot so we don't need a waiter yeah. we don't need a waitress you just throw it plug it in and little jolly robot box it up to you and here's your plate sir yeah and you're like no 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 <laughs> I want it from a human. Yes. I want her to be Debbie and she's a grandma and she's just doing this. People for are running after AI, but one yeah. thing that they don't understand, you'll see people on the street now with yeah. the new goggles, those oh, yeah. Apple goggles, yeah. that they're in their own world. So disconnection completely. Yes. You sit at dinner, you see how the family sits together. Everybody's on their phones. Or iPads Nobody, or uh, whatever. Nobody's connected to one another. Nope. Cars could drive themselves. And then look at what's happening. Even the planes, they fly themselves, yeah. autopilot, yes. right? What's happening now is that you're getting to a point that if AI gets strong enough and smart enough and wanted to get rid, rid of humanity, mm -hmm. it get rid of humanity right away. Boom, the cars crash into one another, plane crashes, atomic bombs just going off, everything yeah everything it controls the world and we're doomed we're done and it's funny because like a lot of people don't know where the nuclear sites are in the states and there's a map that of you course. can look at and i highly recommend people to go and look at where they are because you should know how close you are to a nuclear like holocaust if it if our nukes get set off we're fucked like Correct. the whole we're u.s like the whole West Coast, California is gone. And that's why I say World War Three is yeah. horrible. Because back, remember back in the time when yes. we had World War Two and Pearl Harbor and the Japs yes. and uh, we didn't Hiroshima. Have technology. We didn't have this kind of bombs. We literally have nuclear bombs the size of like a little ping pong ball that we can attach to a drone that can destroy a city. Yeah. 
and decimate it right. and then cause it to be a Chernobyl situation. We That's can go crazy. after nuclear reactors on other countries and do this. Like, look at Japan after they had the flooding in theirs. They still are putting out so much nuclear waste into the water in Japan every day. And they keep trying to keep the tower cool still to today. Like, it is insane the level of, like, threats that we have in the world and nobody looks at them. They think, oh, well, Chernobyl's done. Chernobyl's still active. What do you mean Chernobyl's done? There's still a reactor that they keep cool. Same with Japan. That's why we couldn't get Canon cameras forever. And we were on backward and it became such a thing on getting like SIM cards and everything else for these cameras was because Japan was in Holocaust. Phoenix, I have to ask you a question. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> so, you know, watching you on film, uh -huh. right? Thinking you're probably going to be some alcoholic or some druggy. Right. You're actually very intelligent. Mm -hmm. You're very knowledgeable. Thank you. You have a heart probably as big as this table. Mm -hmm. I could tell. You can feel it, all Thank right? You. you have like the most amazing energy. Thank you. And I think the people at home who have seen you before could never, ever, ever know this unless you're on a podcast like this where we could hear your soul. Yeah. And your brains, you're actually fucking smart. Very smart. Did you take, when was the last scene that you've done? Um, it's been almost over a year now. And have you taken a path of business now? I am on the business path. Um, I am looking at, uh, so I'm writing my memoir. That's going to be my first step is I have converted a lot of things into other businesses as yes. we all do. We'll say it that way, side things. So are you and now an entrepreneur? I'm now entrepreneuring. And um, one of the things I'm doing the most is I'm going to help. I've work, I'm working with the Turkish company that is with basketball and gambling sites and stuff like that. And like, again, yes, I know, not good. Not a good place to go. <laughs> Definitely um, moral law, I'd be dead in two seconds. <laughs> I didn't know about the morality law there. I was like, so wait, you want me to support them, but they want to stone and kill me and behead me immediately off the plane. I'm not going there. Thanks. Right. But it's like one of those, <laughs> like, okay. Like uh, one of my friends was doing something in Saudi Arabia. I'm like, I can't go there. Like, you don't understand. My name, Melissa Hutchison, you Google that, and when they put it in, images of Phoenix Marie will pop up. Right. And I will be killed when I get there. Right. I am against their morality law, which they take serious. And I'm like, there's no reason for me to go to places like that. And it's crazy because even in Christianity, there's a quote that says that if you were found to have sexual intercourse with another man mm -hmm. the person who has found you needs to take you to your dad's home so your dad and your family and the people outside could take you to the middle of the town and stone you yep. to death 100 percent. and that's in christianity and both like, it's crazy uh, so, because that's what they do and and you know what's nuts huh is that most people you'll ask them in the united states what are you and they're like we're christians yeah but they don't practice any christianity nor do they know what christian really means you'll ask people in the united states who are muslims what are you i'm a muslim they don't practice anything that has to do with being a muslim no and the same thing with judaism right it's, it's like what did you do saturday oh nothing you didn't have a family over no shabbat no yeah. nothing okay it's crazy do you know what challah bread is <laughs> almost like united states has created a disconnection from religion right. to everybody well because again once we actually solidify back to family ma like values and morals we're not going to be as easily susceptible to the bullshit that they're feeding us because we're going to have multiple minds to bounce off of and not just the ones that are speaking and we listen we have to have other intelligent people to say things and them to have intelligent things to say back and share information. Do you want to stay in the United States for the rest of your life? No. Or would you ever want to move no. somewhere else? I'm moving. Where? Uh, London. London. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it, I'm going to have a, I, I'm going to buy a flat in London. I'm actually going Friday for a month to go find my flat. And then I'm going to have one in Italy because family. Yes. Um, I'm going to have my dual citizenship, so I'll have an EU passport automatically. And, you saw I was and then I can get my Italy. Israeli passport Yes, because I can course. show my lineage there too. Right. And I'm like, now I can go anywhere in the world I want. 
I was just in Italy. I yeah. went all over Italy. Beautiful, isn't Beautiful, it? Beautiful, amazing. The food, the um, people are always happy. Ju- it was in July. But, it's yeah. just horrible heat, horrible yeah. time. But, but it, was, it was great. Yeah. It was crazy rain at some, some days, like out of nowhere. Yeah. It, it stormed just like sky. Rain. You're yeah. like, what the frick? Okay. And there was like hail that was like this big. It and was it like will pelt you. Yes. It broke everybody's windshields. And they're cars, used to it. They're like, yeah, this crazy. happens every year. What's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the insurance. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I've never seen balls this big. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Hopefully they're bigger, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez. But, but, but now since, you, you know, you would decide to leave the United States, you know, mm-hmm. I've been retired since I was 24. Right. And I went into doing business at a very, very young age because I had no other choice. I was thrown out of my house and it was either go do business, go be a gangster, go be whatever. Right. End up in jail or end up dead. I decided I, I wasn't going to be either way, going to end this my life that way, and I went into business. Smart. Um, I did end up in jail, but then after I got out of Some it, some people and, have to yes. go to jail. Look at Andrew Tate. He yes. even went with his brother. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> make it's make okay. a stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I do want to leave the United States mm-hmm. probably by the end of this year. Or I haven't sometimes. been to Israel yet, so let's just say there's a chance <laughs> maybe a flat there too. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> But now, obviously, you know, if you do leave the States, mm-hmm. you got to have some sort of a business. Do you have any plans for business or something that you're going to be doing in the next I 12 do, months? I do, but I can't say it. Okay. It's big. Okay. Do we know? Big. Can you say what field it is? Um, it's actually using uh, some of what I've learned from the adult and okay. then my medical side. Beautiful. So yeah. I have, um, I'm an MA, uh, EMT. And so with that aspect and then the knowledge that I have from obviously adult, it's mainly going to involve combining the worlds together so I can help, feel, which is funny because my motto is saving marriages one scene at a time, Yeah, <laughs> uh, is going to actually be able to help the man and woman understand the sexual intercourse aspect better because unfortunately women are not as open with their partners when after childbirth they have tears inside their uterus and they don't know why it hurts or they have fibroids that have grown in uh for men like i was saying about the swt and like them having to take pills and hiding it from their partner because they don't want to seem less masculine because they're at an age where fertility isn't there anymore so i want to take that and make it so I have a clinic where people can feel safe to talk about sex and be like, here I am. I have this issue. Please help me. I've had gay men come to me and you would, I had one ask me, am I po- pre or post op? And I went, pretty sure you think I'm a tranny now. And he goes, I do. <laughs> and I was like, okay, why? And he's like, because I've never been able to speak to a woman. Uh, like I can you. Right. And I was like, interesting. Why? Why do you think that is? And he goes, because of the fact that I can be openly gay and you aren't judging me. And I'm like, I'm not going to judge you for your sexual preferences. Right. You came to me and spoke to a woman, even though you thought you were going to speak to the male doctor. And you said, fuck it. I have to trust that I'm in good hands. You trusted me with your secret and your I'm protecting that. And I'm going to help you get better and I'm going to make right. it so you can have great sex again. Because wow. ultimately that's why you came here. Right. And so I can do ESWT and I can help you and I can show you different things that you guys can use at home, like pumps, et cetera, that will only help with sex in long term and maintaining for long periods of time an erection and happiness and great sex at home. Because like we said, if we're not getting the sex and the connection. Correct then we're going to have strife. Right, right. And that's the last thing you want. And if you can't talk about, I have this problem because you feel less of a partner or less of the man that you are, then here's this girl going like, well, he's not even touching me. I was with a man who couldn't get hard for two years. I was with him for almost 10, but for two years he couldn't get hard. What was the reason? He doesn't know and I still don't know. That's I think crazy. he was cheap and we were open in the beginning you know? and then we closed it whenever I stopped doing adult so I could get my degrees. And so it was during the time that we had closed it and it was just us and he could not get an erection. You know, what's crazy is that um, like me and my girl were yeah. so open and yeah. we speak so openly about everything that I've never had such a connection with somebody 
and they say you're supposed to speak to your partner. Yeah. I was asking him, I'm like, what I, can I do? What, I've what? never had this before, but we literally speak about everything. Yes. And that's everything. amazing. And wait till I, you uh, have kids. And I. Kids involved with, between the two of the hands. So personally, I have like, a, a, you know, an, yes. an issue with having sex with sleeping with certain girls because right. if they're small i'm i might hurt know, them <laughs> I, yes yes so i have to i have to be very soft yes right and when i first got naked she looked at me and she was like like what are we doing <laughs> what are we gonna do here and i said well you know it's like wow i was like you're welcome. <laughs> yes, everything's going to be okay. But then I have to... Remember what I said? Is all yes. Israeli men he well hung? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, is the and answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got then, from this, guys. <laughs> and then, you know, at the end of the day... And I mean, she's she's only been with Israeli. And like, if you're not Jewish, she wouldn't be with you. Right. You know, so her boyfriends were all Jewish. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she was so surprised how soft I am. Oh. And how tender I am. Right. And we slowly, slowly, gradually built to like making more love, and more, more intense, intense, more passion, yes. more grabbing, yes. more like you said, sucking on toes while you're inside her, and like, like just all the fetishes that you both like from each other. Yeah, because exactly. people forget women have fetishes too. Yeah, and and they do. They always think about the but men's fetishes. Yeah, but they don't speak about yeah. it. And men don't usually care about making what the a woman. fuck girl wants. Yeah, yeah, they're like, let me do it one, two, three, whether it's two Does minutes, this work? five minutes, that's it. This work? Yeah. <laughs> or, or when they do this? Yeah. And you're like, listen, buddy, I peed before I came here. Yeah. Please stop hurting me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it's just to the point where it's like, it's numb now. Don't stick your dick in there. I'm no longer wet. We're done. <laughs> right, right. But it's like, first time that I had a conversation. Also, her. Yeah. She's so shy. You saw how she is. She's so shy. She is shy. She never had a conversation like this with somebody. And then she sat down with me. I sat down with her and I said, look, we need to be open about everything, right? Because we want to be together forever. Right. How do we build the perfect relationship? And we've been together for five months now, less than five months, mm -hmm. four and a half months. We've been together. That's actually since the day that I met her. Wow. And we're already living like a married couple. That's amazing. And why? And because we're because so open. Because you already connected. No, like we you said, like your 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 souls. You we found feel it. like we've been together for a million Forever. years. And I'm sure she does yeah. things where you're just like, I never had a girl do that in front of me. Interesting. Okay, I still never. love you. Fine, move never. on. Never. It's or crazy. laugh about it. Like yes. you said, it's we like laugh about everything. It's like we're hey, guess friends. what? I'm on protein powder. Sorry, I might fart. Mm. <laughs> happens and then so we have the joke. we have this conversation that okay. is so funny no the conversation is that we both don't fart okay it's really funny and i tell her if you need to go ahead all right. no problem all right and she's like but i don't need to and neither do i and it because i don't we both don't drink protein powder okay well that's we what both i was eat joking extremely yeah. healthy right but we don't eat too much fiber right where you have gas you gas. know or and we train daily that are super heavy yeah we don't eat cheese at all there you go and See? then we don't drink milk yeah so you know everything is like for Clean. us it's normal yeah it's like there is no needing to fart but we've had that conversation right where i said if you need to go don't worry yeah even if we're in fine. the car we could open the windows yeah it's um, like it's good don't it, worry yeah it's don't even worry about one it. one day you're gonna take her somewhere and like the air so you know whenever you travel like it's uh, not uncommon for there to be gas that yeah. builds up in your system so I can't wait for the travel day where you guys go <laughs> somewhere like Mexico where you've eaten only like food that you don't really have control over. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, my stomach. Oh, God, it's all bad. <laughs> Babe, get out of the room. It'll you know, so it's crazy. Cute. We've known each other for four and a half months. We've already traveled to Cancun, to Tulum. We've been <gasps> all over the uh, few places in the U.S. We've right. been to Florida. We've been to New York. We've been to L.A. together. We've been to Israel together. We've been to Thailand together and all over Thailand. That's like amazing. we've traveled so much right. in just literally four and a half months of knowing each other. That's so great. Not even being together. I mean, you know, we were literally talking for a month and a half before anything really before happened. Before like, okay, I think we so can work out. So we were together for three months. How long did you wait to have sex? No, a month and a half. That was it? 
Yeah. A month <laughs> I was and thinking you were going to go longer. A month and a half. Well, we felt it. We was like, okay, that's the one. Mm-hmm. And it was a month and a half of just talking and so it was talking and, and, and like coffee yeah, and didn't. like this before it was like listen i, didn't I can't even wait. want yeah i didn't even want to have sex with her i just wanted to get to know her yeah and when i got to know her once we made love it was like the best love in the world and it doesn't matter who i've had before this is the best all right of the best. i gotta go uh, <laughs> i gotta go find me one no. <laughs> it was such a great podcast and truly i was we'll come back we'll happy. do it again you must you must. i'm like i'm sure there's going to be something happening in the world that we need to debunk and yes. discuss i would yeah. love to i mean if you saw that uh, mark zackenberg just literally shut spent, down but he spent a hundred million dollars on a bomb shelter under his house in hawaii yeah what is happening what does he know that we don't know what is why happening, is everything right? painting blue yes not being eradicated by these ems's that they're using oh Who we have knows? so many things but people got to start opening their minds start opening their eyes you I know agree. too much lack of perspicacity out there yeah. people got to wake the fuck up and guys uh i need you all to take 50 milligrams of dhea and 50 milligrams of pregnileone at night and go with uh, life extensions or orthomolecular, and you will get some of that testosterone to not be free testosterone, but it'll actually be productive. Okay? Yes. Do yes. that. It'll <laughs> no help with some of you guys. Yes, and no steroids, and guys. Everybody no steroids accuses and me. Zinc. You take steroids. Well, you just you're full of steroids. You're on trend, and I'm like, guys, stop. And trend is like the least of steroids. Like it's actually an over the counter fucking supplement. So yeah. get people over don't it. people don't get it. They gave yeah. it to they gave it to horses, race horses. I know. Same and as when the... you give it to men, they just get angry. I'm happy all the time, guys. I'm good. <laughs> don't worry. No, they, it's because <laughs> you come off masculine. And they think you're mad. Right. Like, Fuck you, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> mess with us you know what happens between us the, yeah. everyone's dead <laughs> you're gonna flip them over and i'm gonna toss them I'm to the like, other hey, babe, side catch. <laughs> oh god all right that i gotta was go good. that was good that was good well phoenix thank you so much thank for you. coming out it I was a pleasure it. to have same you. and you're absolutely amazing and let's so take you. a photo together yes i gotta have it well, all everyone's right. gonna be like what the fuck guys the blackout is over see you on the next one